Everybody, good morning. Chris, the rest of the gang from Team Aquascape. Today we have a very fun project out here in the beautiful south suburbs of Chicago. And we are going to be doing about an 18 by 12 ecosystem pond with about a 12 foot stream. We've got a bridge going over it. We've got a little bit of a bluestone patio, a crushed granite patio, all to take over this space. You guys ready for this one? Let's go. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So like I said, this is the area that we're gonna work with. This is our canvas. I am standing where we'll be an 18 by 18 foot pergola eventually, but we're gonna take all the grass out from here. These arborvitaes all the way over to the other property line. You can see I've got a white paint line painting all this out. This is all gonna be bare dirt. Our stream and waterfalls will start over there, leading down to the pond this way. It'll be about 18 feet from here to there, 12 feet wide. Really, really cool. I'll show you the layout when we get to that point. There's gonna be a bridge that takes you out to the rest of the yard with a crust stone pathway over there just so so fun first things first you see it we've got the side cutter out we need to get this whole area cleared out so that we can lay out the pond and show you the design and kind of walk through that with you, you guys ready i know i am so we're down to the last few scraps of turf to get out of here and we're gonna go ahead and mark out the pond here's our access right up through here back and forth you can see we've got our switch go body rolled down off the body of the truck got luis over here working one of the last wheelbarrows in and then here's our pile of boulders courtesy of illinois brick we've got about 12 ton of rock right here everything from our kind of four to eight inch here's our 12 to 18s in through here and then we have 18 to 24s over here so we've got four tons four tons two tons and then we've got all our gravel and everything staged in super sets. There's that full color blue stone that's right over there. But here's that switch and go body because some of you haven't seen us use it. But the whole body actually rolls off the truck, which is great. We've got everything fabricated. So we've got our Milwaukee pack out systems, toolboxes, all that stuff. We've got our hand tools underneath right there. But super, super convenient to not have to load these things up into the bed of the truck. It's nice to be able to roll that body down and then obviously get all that grass that you see behind me in wheelbarrows and then out to the truck. So we're going to get that last little piece of side by the gate out and then we are going to start digging digging that pond so I'll, I'll walk you through the layout here shortly Okay, so we've thrown some paint on the ground after getting everything kind of leveled off, getting it to the, essentially the grade that we need it to be. This had a little bit of a crest in through here. Dan went ahead and pulled all that dirt back and threw it back behind the berm. We've got the 6,000 biofalls placed over there. That will deposit through a series of waterfalls or one, maybe one big cascade. We'll figure something out creative. I think they're more of a bird loving family. So we're gonna try and do something slow moving and just a lot of movement as well. We'll go into an upper pool and then it will go underneath a bridge which sits right over here. I think what we'll do is we'll use a couple pieces of the full color bluestone that's out there and maybe do either a solid slab or a peekaboo bridge then that stream will deposit into the pond over here so this is over here is the edge of the pond and then we go 18 feet all the way that way and then the other dimension of the pond is about 12 feet from here to basically that longest point over there so we got an 18 by 12 foot pond we're gonna go three feet deep down here in the very very bottom and the area closest to the house give a nice little fish feeding area we're gonna put a fish cave in here this orange amoebic shape will be a decomposed granite walkway we will put in here and then that will lead you to the bridge and then it will continue out into the yard there bluestone slabs butting up to this concrete patio here and then at some point there will be an 18 by 18 foot pergola outdoor seating area out through there to kind of frame everything together so it brings the pond edge very close and approachable to the gazebo or pergola as well as to this extension of the patio and to this what will be a new kind of bench seating area slash walkway leading you out to the rest this awesome backyard so we're gonna start digging first thing would be to get this biofall set and then that way we can start burying get the plumbing connected bury the plumbing and then have a place to throw our dirt create that burn
limestone excavation of the pond is complete minus the stream but we opted to not excavate the stream area that goes underneath the bridge until later on in the project the reason we did that is we want to be able to maintain access in through here between the back side of the pond and the bio falls that way we can bring rock over to this side get it nice and close and still allow us to come here with rock as well we went to a three foot deep section down there you can see we've got our geotextile underlayment now getting dropped in then what we will do is we will come in with our 20 by 25 foot liner and situate it so that we hit from that corner all the way over to there so the reason we went with a 20 by 25 foot liner is we have a 12 by 18 foot pond however we went three feet deep on this project yes three so what we're going to do is we're going to lose going three feet down into the pond and three feet coming back up those sidewalls we're going to lose an additional six feet on top of the 18 or the 12 that is the perimeter shape of the pond so you always want to make sure that you size your liner accordingly to not only the overall surface footprint but also compensate for the depth and add that into your calculations so since we are a 12 foot wide by 18 foot wide pond we added six feet to both sides to compensate for the three feet down and the three feet back up making it a let's see what would that be that would be an 18 by 24 foot pond if i math right so the 20 by 25 should be good we just need to make sure that we dig everything to the correct excavated depth so that we're not going too deep and then making one of the edges bad and having to suck in one of the edges to compensate for the shortness of the liner so we are going to go ahead and get that 20 by 25 in and then i'll show you how we're going to spin that thing to really maximize the square footage of it a 20 by 25 foot liner we just pulled out of the box right there so you all can believe me that's what it is looks like we've got our 25 foot going from end to end so we're gonna go ahead and hold this thing up walk it in there and then unfold it Okay, so as you can see, it's gonna be pretty close by the time we end up stepping the liner down into the pond over where Chris is at. So what we're gonna to need to do now is we're gonna twist this whole thing probably about 30 degrees in order to take advantage of that corner right in front of JD, as well as this little area over here will now accept that corner a little bit better. So let's go ahead and twist it a little bit. So you're gonna go counterclockwise yep. like this. That corner's gotta go like almost out in front of the machine right there, okay? You guys understand what we're doing, right? To be able to use that corner as much as we can of it because that area is so close over there when chris was standing over there he only had about 10 inches of liner on top of the dirt and we hadn't even knocked it down into the pond yet so when we do that we're going to pull everything this way and pull everything from my corner to make it fit inside the pond we have plenty width wise and now we have some of that corner where Luis is to compensate for that cove because the whole thing's like a big triangle back day two out here we've got jd over here figuring out elevations so that we make sure that the bottom course of wall stone that we set down in the very bottom of the pond is at the correct elevation juan luis myself chris jack are going to start rocking in the bottom of the pond over here it's important that we do a mixture of stone but we also don't want to put a bunch of small stuff in here because we still need this stuff to be structural uh, down in here as well so we're going to mix it up between the three sizes and give jack danley a good place to jump off of over here and then we will rock in the whole bottom get that bottom course set this wall will get done and then we will start branching out from there rocking in this top section over there back in through here throughout the seam we are going to have to pull off a seam up into here water level currently is right about here this whole section back here will be a deep stream shallow extension of the pond so we're going to have to run a seam between these two pieces of liner we are not going to be able to rely on an overlap the way we would in some scenario so a lot of stuff happening today we will end up rocking in this whole section and probably get the pond finished today and give ourselves a good chance to work in through this stream bridge area tomorrow again if you remember earlier in the video i talked about not cutting off or not digging this and cutting off access back in through here because that's where all of our material as you can see is coming and going in and out of here so that's where we're going to start So earlier 
in the video or just a second ago we talked about the importance of knowing elevations and setting the bottom course the correct height so jd what are we doing over here so you and dan playing with the transit not playing with it but <laughs> but using it so what's going on here so as you guys can see we're incorporating one of those rocked walls that we do a lot of times in these ponds to allow a patio to cantilever right out over the pond right now we're shooting elevation to kind of gauge exactly the thickness of our pavers we're going to have hanging over so what we did is as you can see dan set the six foot level just right on top of the existing patio and that way we'll know the thickness of our slabs we went out and they're roughly about an inch and a half to two inches so as you can see here we kept our level towards the existing patio and dropped it two inches just so we can always shim it back up and anything uh, if we need but um the importance of bringing the transit over here too is we already established water level in the pond so that was a big reason so yes everything's correct but we also wanted to make sure that water level based off of what we set it at when we installed the skimmer box over there is also going to be where we need it on this wall and we still have enough liner coming up the back side of this brick wall in order to create like a watertight edge essentially right so we just wanted to double check that the elevation of our flagging that will hang out over top of this brick wall that you're building will be level with that patio but we also wanted to make sure that when we set water level in here that it's not going to be too high up that top course but also it's not too low so we just wanted to make sure we double checked everything while we're doing this base course which is that bottom brick over there right behind the dead blow and then that's really gonna set you free and keep rolling across the bottom over here so due diligence is the due key diligence. to this yep. right so making sure that all the prep work is done understanding elevations the thickness of the flagging the thickness of the bricks how many courses all that kind of stuff and then obviously getting your base material set to the proper elevation is key to running with this at that point so good good explanation by jd over there right now we've got the whole bottom rocked as you can see now juan luis jack Kaczynski, chris and myself are going to continue rocking the pond while these guys are working on this behind me we are going to do a little bit of a fish cave over here using this piece of flagging that we're going to set up over this deep section not deep section but this little section over here the fish cave was one of the things that was on the bid sheets that was important to the customers to have because they really 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 want to have fish in here and don't want to have to worry about predation and that kind of stuff so we're going to work this in it will help mimic some of the other elements around the pond not only the flagging here but also the bridge back behind me so we're going to go ahead and fit this thing in rock around it and then keep rolling so we always build from the bottom up so this is no different than what we normally do so we're going to work this in you'll see how cool it turns out 